Theater 5, show number 41, Look Who's Talking. The opening teaser runs 29 seconds, ends with theme up to conclusion. There's a two-second break here for the first commercial. The first act runs 8 minutes 22 seconds, ends with a cue, A New World Between Us, followed by a music curtain. There's a two-second pause here for commercials 2 and 3. The second act runs 10 minutes 50 seconds, ends with a cue, Wake Up Three Times, followed by Dives and Laughter and a Music Curtain. There's a two-second pause here for commercial number four. The closing follows and contains full credits. The show feed will begin five seconds from now. Can't you hear them? Can't you hear? You mean the dolphins? Of course I can hear them. Listen. Listen closely, please. I can hear the dolphins just as well as you do. But don't you understand what they're saying? Theater 5 presents Look Who's Talking. Hydrophones in place, Barbara? All set. They can talk whenever they're ready. You know, Alan, there are people who think I'm out of my mind when I tell them what kind of work I do. What's wrong with research science? <laughs> Teaching dolphins to speak? Well, well, they should be able to. Their brains are bigger than ours. Uh, test it, Barbara. One, two, three, test. One, two, three. Uh, recorder on in the lab? Uh, check. Uh, to turn up the volume on that speaker, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you see her? Yeah, they're in a good mood today. There's Esau's glass. Yeah, and Tamburlaine's clicking. I wonder what it means. It means he's losing his upper plate. <laughs> Barbara, did you hear that? No, what? One, two, three, test. He was repeating it. Well, I'm darned if I heard anything. Look, with let's get it off the recorder and slow it down for analysis. <laughs> Run it again, George, once more. Dr. Hughes will never believe this when he gets back. He'll have to, won't he? Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> one, two, three, test. One, two, three, test. It's fantastic. <laughs> this is the best evidence we've had. Well, it could be coincidence, Alan. Well, Dr. Hughes will say so. Uh, now, now, wait, now, wait. The important part is here. Listen. There. Did you hear it? I didn't hear anything. But it's Esau. He said, be patient, be patient. Uh, look, here. Now listen. Either I'm deaf or you're hearing things. <laughs> You've been on this project too long, old boy. I mean, conversations now? You didn't hear it? No. Can you hear a dog whistle? Supersonic? No. But we know the dolphin goes into that range, don't we? You mean, you've become attuned to it? Well, I... I don't know. We're all trying to reach each other. I, uh... I'm tired. I think I'll go to dinner. Oh, sure. Come come with us, Alan. It's been a long day. No, I think I'll get into the pool. I've got to make our report for Dr. Hughes. Maybe I can persuade him to do this kind of research. He's a knife man, Alan. You know that. Biological research. Brain dissection. Yeah, I know, I know. It seems a shame. They're such intelligent animals. Sensitive. They, they like laughter and, and goodwill and people. Zelda's almost human. Well, have a good dinner. You know, I think he really believes that he can persuade those dolphins to talk by coaxing them. Or reasoning with them, like people. You know, it would be a, a gigantic step, though. Ideas between species. Think of it. Amazing. Do you suppose, maybe, he really heard? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tamburlaine, that's your last fish. Overeating blunts the intellect. <laughs> well, what's that? What's that, Zelda? Sure, sure, I'm getting in with you. <sighs> oh, oh, it's warm, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I know. You want your back scratched. <laughs> hey, look at Esau there, barreling down like the Orient Express. Head him off, Tamburlaine. 
Now, 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 stop baring your teeth. You don't scare me. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll listen to whatever you have to say. No, no, I don't, but I know we can. Alice? Huh? Oh, uh, Barbara, I, I, uh, I thought you'd gone to dinner. I had to change. It certainly sounds like you're having a conversation down there. Well, how do we know? We hear only half the sounds they make. They may be very lucid outside our range. And then again, why do they have to learn our language? Maybe they're trying to teach me theirs. You'll surely be the first to learn. Uh, well, that's the important thing, isn't it? Communication. I don't care whether they learn or I learn. I mean, think what the dolphins could tell us about the world of the sea, about navigation, about tides, about another species, maybe about ourselves. Well, the way you stay in that water forever, I think you could tell them about themselves. <laughs> And, uh, that's it? That's it, Dr. Hughes. An impressive demonstration. Unless, of course, you prefer to be scientific about it and accept the, uh, the words as just random sounds. But they make a phrase. You heard it? You're sentimentalizing. Putting a little man inside these dolphins. I thought our job was to find out if they can be taught to speak. To find out, yes. Not to say that they can offhand. Meantime, we'll slaughter more of them, removing brain specimens to find out if they've got the cortical equipment, the area code. And that, I take it, is pure science. Now, let me... Let me put it pragmatically. These creatures are animals. No matter how much larger their brains may be than ours, no matter how many seemingly human attributes they may possess, they... Are animals. Oh, are they? Or are we the animals? Hmm. Well, I regret this deeply. He's given so much to this project. Night and day. And that may be it, exhaustion. In any case, we'll return to the clinical program tomorrow with the use of brain electrodes. I want specimen B7, the one you call Esau, put into a sling and brought to the lab at 10 in the morning. <laughs> Lower it. All right, now float him. Good. Yes, but uh, give me that wet sheet. The overhead light burns their backs. <laughs> Skin's like babies, these things. All right, now, all right, he saw. Just relax. You've had these electrodes before. Oh, you worry too much, Alan. I'm convinced there's no pain attached to this. Well, no, not now. Not placing it. But when he's in the pool, I mean, do you know what it does to his mind when that charge crashes through his brain? Error one, he has no mind. Error two, the stimulus is pleasurable. That has been established. There is pain when he swims the edge of the pool. The electrodes pinch the forward cortex. How can you know that? I've listened to him. <laughs> Stay here. I'll get Holland to help carry him out. Well, how is it, Esau, with wires jammed into your brain? Do you hate us for barbarians? No. No. I, I tried to prevent this. Believe me. No need. We could jump the sluice gates, Zelda and I. Even Tamberlane, old as he is. But we stay for a reason. Yes, I, I, I thought you did. It's the same as ours, isn't it? Intercommunication? Yes. We have a wealth to exchange between species. New worlds will open for us. Esau, do you realize what we're doing? Hmm? We've established contact. We're talking now. Oh, you and I? Yes, yes, this is interspecies. Don't you understand? Oh, yes. We've had it for some time with you. Now, what can I tell them that will help? Well, Alan... Which of our sounds do you hear best? Oh, that's easy. Uh, the lower frequency. Ah. Stay below eight kilocycles. Yes. And slow the pace, please. You mm. see, your minds work too fast oh. for us. We can't assimilate the, the speed of your speech. It'll take some trying, Esau, but, but lower the sound waves and keep it slow. Ah, I see. Well, we're going to break through, Alan. We're going to speak to each other. We're going to open a new world between us. Hydrophones in place. Amplifiers? All hooked up. Tape recorder? Ready. 
Can you read the electrode graph while you handle that recorder? Oh, yes, easily. All right, George, open the sluice gate. Let Esau join the others in the pool. Look at that leap. He's got wings. You know, I don't think he'll need the shock, Doctor. Look, look at the speed of that swimming. That's stimulation enough. Talk, 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 talking. Did you hear that noise? Error one, he has no mind. Error, error, no mind. Error. Watch the graph. I'm going to feed him a shock. No, no, no. Why? He, he doesn't need it. I've got to make the most of this. Oh, please. That's enough, Dr. Hughes. It's enough. Error. 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 Did you see you've disturbed his balance? His course is eccentric. Slow down, Esau. Slow. Slow. Oh, no. Esau. What is it? He crashed his head into the poolside. He's going down. Bring him up. Dive for him, Zelda. Look, look what they're doing. They're going down after him. But look, they've got him between them. They're floating him up. Uh, hurry, Zelda, hurry. Swim him to the edge. George, George. Here, help me, George. Help me get him out. Come on, Zelda, come on. Swim him over. Yeah. Man, get him together. Pull him up. How is he? Esau. Oh, Esau. I'll be brave, Zelda. Will he be all right, Alan? No. He's dead. Oh, no. He's dead. Esau is dead. Oh, Esau is dead. Listen to them, Hughes. Do you hear them? You hear the animals talking? What's the matter with you? There's your proof. They talk, they feel, they cry. Do you hear them? Of course not. Does anyone hear anything? Barbara, George? Esau. Esau. No. I'm sorry, Alan. I've called you to this meeting in view of yesterday's misfortune. It seems that in my absence, science has suffered a certain decline, an emasculation of pure fact. The pure fact, Hughes, is that you murdered him. That is an irresponsible and meaningless statement. These are laboratory animals. Esau died in the interest of science. The interest of science, as I understand our objective here, is to create an interspecies understanding. Do we understand anything by killing it? Now, Alan, you place me in an embarrassing position. I... I've spoken to... The to the directors of this project, Alan. About my departure from pure science? You've identified too closely with these animals. Yes, yes. Attributed human characteristics, you mean. Sentiment has no place in the absolutes. If you know what the absolutes are. And you seem to have lost sight of them. Yes. I'm no longer certain that they're the animals and we're the humans. But if that remains true, I know where I'd rather be. I hope you'll excuse me. I promised I'd speak to them out at the pool. Tamberlane? Yes? Where's Zelda? At the bottom. Uh, call her up, would you please? I'll uh, slip in at the ladder here. Oh. oh, it's good to get into the water. Away from that research jargon. Oh, no wonder their brains are larger. They've got sense enough to live this way. Hello, Zelda. I needn't tell you how sorry I am. No. He believed very deeply in the work here. We all do. Yes, I know, but I wonder if you're being deceived. You see, it's true, of course, that our alleged purpose here is an intercultural research, but scientific programs can lose their basic aims. Oh, what I mean is that I think you and Tamberlane had better go while you can. Back to sea. Well, Dr. Hughes is growing more certain that the answer is to be found in your brain structure. It may be. I'm afraid you don't understand me. Oh, yes. You're saying we could be killed. Yes. We haven't decided yet. Haven't decided? What are you saying? It's a great deal to abandon, Alan. This effort may never be made again. Now listen here, I won't let you give your lives for it. The program is hopeless now. 
The ends can never be achieved his way. You've got to understand that. No. No, tonight I open the sluice gate. Oh, no, please. Try once more to convince him. Make him listen for us. It's such a waste if Esau died for nothing. This is so big, so important. Make him go on until he hears. In order to hear, you have to want to hear, not want to kill. Promise you'll try. There's a new world waiting for us. It's for Esau. Remember. All right. I'll try. Yes, Alan. What can I do for you? I wanted to see you privately. I must warn you that I've come to a clinical opinion based on analysis of Esau's brain. The dolphin has no speech centers such as we have. Isn't that a little arbitrary? Have you scientific evidence to the contrary? I have practical evidence. Of what nature? All right, I'll tell you openly. The fact is they've spoken to me many times at great length, in our language as well as their own. Now, Alan, Oh, I... all right, all right. I know it's a reckless statement, but it happens to be true. Alan, I've recommended a vacation for you. I think you ought to take it as the staff and I move into the more clinical aspects of research. <laughs> you mean you'd rather not have me here for the murder of Zelda and Tamburlaine? I mean I can no longer tolerate these lurid charges of yours. Don't you realize I'm begging you to understand these creatures? Look, you must continue this phase. Fraternity between species is so important, they're ready to die for it. it, it it's a dream, an ideal they must achieve, especially with Esau's death. Now, just stay with them until you reach them or until they reach you. I... Please. Alan, you cannot convince me that there is, after all, a little man in each of them. Now, be ready. Be ready. He's just inside the lab there. You couldn't convince him. Tamberlane, man is an arrogant creature. He understands only what relates to him, not the things to which he must relate. I'll, uh, I'll get the sluice gate open now. We'll miss you, Alan. It's all right, it's all right. We'll meet again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's stuck. It's stuck. Alan, Dr. Hughes will hear. Who's out there? Who's pulling the sluice gate chain? Alan? He's coming. He's coming. Get away from that sluice gate, you hear me? Open, open. Get away from it. I'm warning you, Alan. I warn you to stay away from me. They're going free. Now, don't you come any closer. Oh. It's open. It's open. Go, get out. Never mind, never mind. Please get out. But he's going to the bottom. He's unconscious. He'll drown. I don't care. Let him drown. Go back to sea. Help me. Help me bring him up. Why do they do it? Why do they kill themselves for him? If they don't get out, they'll be slaughtered. I'll have to go after them. Bring him out. Zelda, Tamberlane, where are you? Take the doctor to the side of the pool. Stay close, Zelda. Listen. I'll get him out. Bring him over to the side here. That's right. Right here. Now go now, please. Leave the rest to me. There. There, you see? He's out. Go. Hurry. Goodbye, Alan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Alan. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Alan. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tamberlane. <laughs> They're out. They're out. They're out. <laughs> oh, I've made it. I've, I've made it. I've, I've made it. Wake up, Hughes. I've got your answer. Let's get on with the dissection. 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 
<laughs> this one's got a little man in him. Man in him. Man in him. <laughs> Let's go to pure science, Hughes. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Theater 5 has presented Look Who's Talking, written by Richard McCracken and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, William Redfield, Evelyn Juster, Edward Bryce, Bryna Rayburn, Owen Jordan, June Graham, and Ralph Bell. Audio engineers, Neil Pulse and Marty Folia. Sound technicians, Ed Blaney and M.C. Brock. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastatsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.